Tell me honestly, has anyone else spent more time on Amazon this past year than they ever have in their whole life? Or is it just me? They get me every time. They get me every time. And today is no exception because today we're gonna be testing out some very interesting looking kitchen gadgets. Just things that sort of caught my eye as, you know, I, I need you, put you in my cart. <laughs> Amazon guy, drive it to my house. And we're just gonna test these out and see what's actually going to work. What is worth, in many cases, the extremely high ratings that a lot of these have. I think one, one of these products has like, I think like 37,000 reviews. 37,000 reviews, that's crazy. So if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you subscribe, new videos here every single Saturday. I've been testing a lot of different kitchen gadgets so you can go and check out those videos. Or I did like a wrap up, I think, I think it was last month, of all of my favorite and least favorite products from Amazon. So you can go and check that out. And now let's dive into product number one. And this product caught my eye for two reasons. Number one, it just, it just looks very interesting. And number two, it has a lot of five-star reviews. Like people love this thing. And it is a <laughs> microwave s'mores maker because who doesn't need that in, in their life? It's like way over here. Uh, Rachel, come to me s'mores maker. It looks like this. There's this little guy. It's waving. And this thing, this thing right here is supposed to make perfect s'mores in the microwave. Perfect, they promise me. And what's really interesting about this is that it has this little guy right here. You know what this is for? This is for water. So it can steam <laughs> the s'mores. I don't understand this, but apparently it's supposed to be delicious. And I like s'mores and I wanna eat s'mores right now. So, so let's do this. All right, so <laughs> hands up if you wanna eat a s'more with me. So let's just make sure I'm not missing anything in the instructions. Like, you know, don't fill it with water all the way or something, I don't know. I like reading instructions. Actually, no, that's not true. Most of the time I don't like reading instructions. I just wanna wing it. I think I got it. So the big thing is we're gonna add in the appropriate amount of water. Apparently there is a fill line. It's this guy right here. That's a fill line if I ever saw one. We're over here, we're filling, done. His arm's back like that, <laughs> he just looks really mad. He looks like he just doesn't wanna be here, you know? We're gonna clip it closed. It says it should snap closed. I guess like that. We're gonna dry it off. No excess water should be on the platform. All right, and now assembling a s'more. This is the best part. Do I need to put like chocolate on the bottom or on the top? Chocolate on the bottom, right? Not reading instructions on that. First we have the graham crackers. Now I personally like to just snack on graham crackers. That's why we never have any in the house because I keep eating them. I don't know why, that's like a kind of a random thing to just enjoy snacking on, but I do. Look at it, what is that? That's not breaking that on the line. It's gonna have to be a snacking graham cracker. Okay. I have my tops over there. Oh my gosh, I can't even see it. There we go. So for chocolate, I have these guys. So we're gonna try that and we're gonna see if it works. Obviously they do use a much thinner chocolate, but maybe, you know, we'll try it like this for one. And for the other one, I will chop it. Give it a little chop. I feel like this is a lot of work for a microwave s'more, but um, we're gonna go with it. Yeah, that feels more like the thickness that they seem to be doing in the video. Wait, not in the video, <laughs> we're doing the video. On the Amazon listing. Now, the marshmallow. Got to get the nice fluffy marshmallow. Boop, boop. All right, personally, I would add more marshmallows, but I think they only added one. Uh, so we're just gonna do one. Okay, hold them down. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna take this, we're gonna microwave it on high for 30 seconds. And apparently all this steam in here is going to help the marshmallow to not overcook. So you get a nice, gooey, delicious marshmallow experience, which, you know, I'm all about. I will take that. We'll take that all day. And now we wait. We eat graham crackers. They're so good. They're so good. I can see why toddlers love this so much. Ooh, 30 seconds. All right, let's see. Ooh, gooey. I mean, it's missing the obvious, you know, browning situation from you know, roasting it on the fire, but ooh, this chocolate, that's not even, that's not even a little bit melted. But the marshmallow is gooey. Uh, mm, should we do a little bit more? Maybe like another, like another 10 seconds. I know I'm doing it more than I should, but like the, the chocolate's just, just like, it's not even warm, you know? Okay, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I don't want it to like explode or anything. Am I me? I'm just over here like, eyes glued to the microwave. Oh, perfect. That's 
much better. I mean, the chocolate hasn't changed at all, but it's a little bit more gooey in terms of the marshmallow itself. I would definitely recommend a thinner slice of chocolate if you're going to do this. But let's examine, look at that. Ooh. Okay, well, I guess we should, I guess we should try it. Okay. It's so messy. Mmm, that is really good. The marshmallow got some good stretch to it, which I feel like you don't normally get in the microwave. It does taste like a s'more. The marshmallow isn't getting that stale, hard kind of a feeling, probably because of the steam. And it seems flexible enough that I added another 10 seconds or so, and it didn't really seem to change that much other than the chocolate got a little bit melty, which I do appreciate. Honestly, this is really good. It's a very specific product, but if you enjoy s'mores and maybe you can't make them most of the time outside, it does work. Wow, right out of the gate, we got a good one. Love this for us. Ooh, Christopher. Okay, I just saw Christopher. I'm gonna put this one back in the microwave and like warm it for 10, 15 seconds and just see if it can be like rewarmed. Ooh, I think it did. Christopher, look. What is that? <laughs> It's a s'mores maker. I reheated it. I wanted to see if it reheated. How does it heat in the first place? <laughs> well, a microwave and steam. And then it holds it in place so it doesn't like flop all over the place. When you're oh, that's what that, I was wondering if it does like steams directly down. No. But I was like, there's no hole here. Just like an apparati to keep it in place. All right. Oh, you forgot one. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> You really do miss the smokiness of the campfire, that's but what I, said. I mean, yeah, that's a kind of a bland s'more, but that's a s'more. It's a s'more. It's a microwave s'mores maker. Okay, hang on a second. You're gonna add chili flakes to this. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I shaved some of it off for mine. I made it thinner. All right. Are you making your own? There's no need for that. I'm just gonna sit here and eat my s'more. What are you doing? I'm making a microwave s'more maker. What? Well, I'm just curious if you actually need that whole gizmo contraption. Why not? I guess so. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. And then, mm, no, too precarious. Too wobbly. But I do need this. All right. You want to explain what you just did? Well, I made a s'more. I don't think this is actually necessary. This one used, it said 30 seconds. 30 seconds? All right, uh -huh. let's see what happens. All right, this is going poorly. Oh no. Oh no, no. <laughs> Still got five seconds left. <laughs> you proud of yourself? <laughs> well, hang on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay, just, you know, yep, yep. scoop, yep, scoop it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. How much was the s'more maker? <laughs> Looks like it needs more time because the chocolate doesn't look melted. You said you shaved yours down. So I think it needs a bit more time. Well, I, I shaved it down on one and not on the other and then I reheated it. Oh, you need the water in there. Get oh, the water. Yeah. Steam is important, apparently. I feel like I have chocolate all over myself. But uh, what else is new? Just gonna eat your s'more, apparently. It's not melted chocolate. You're, you're gonna put it back in. You're brave. What's worse gonna happen? <laughs> All right, show me what you got. Seems like it's working. Ooh. You gotta get the cheese pull. She is very beautiful. That's a cheesy marshmallow right there. Mmm. <laughs> I'm scared I'm gonna burn myself. Did you burn yourself? No, it's not that hot. Okay, good. The marshmallow got gummy though. Mmm, mm-hmm. It's like gum. I gotta say, I did not expect your marshmallow contraption thing here to be an improvement. And yet. There it is, 150 bucks well spent. It wasn't $150. Well, plus tax. <laughs> Thanks for proving how amazing it is. All right guys, jumping in here because it's dinner time and I wanna test out another, <laughs> another gadget. This is the stir. Stir. It is an automatic pan stir. So basically, it just, it stirs on its own and I <laughs> need to see this in action. This is what it looks like. Revolution in your pan. Jazz hands. And it rotates and you can stir different soups, sauces. I don't know. I don't even know what it can stir, but we're, that's what we're gonna test out because tonight we're having spaghetti and we're having meat sauce. So I figured let's test it on the meat sauce. Meat sauce is cooking. 
Let's put this in it. Bloop. Well, that's adorable. I assume this takes batteries? Okay, I need to check this. Four AA batteries. <laughs> that's a lot of batteries. All right, got batteries in this thing. So let's see what this looks like or does. I assume, like it's just supposed to rotate when you turn it on. So, and I think there are three different speeds as well. It's just vibrating right now. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me put this down. Ah. Oh my gosh. Look at her go. Oh, rotating in different directions. Well, this is just fun. I just wanna watch this all day. Okay, let's put it in the pot. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off first. I'm gonna stick it into this sew us. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Well, that was that was beautiful. Excellent work. It's like moving a tiny little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess this is too thick. Too thick of a meat sauce. Well, if you can't do meat sauce, I don't know if you're gonna be useful in my life, bro. Oh no. Wah, wah. I like the idea so much though, so maybe I'm gonna try it with like some soup or something and see if that works, but like anything that's as thick or thicker than a meat sauce is, is not going to work for it. Soups, end of the list. That was a hard pass on that one. Okay, well that's disappointing. I was really excited about this one. Right, it's morning guys and Chris is making oatmeal for the kids and he says that it was working when it was just oats and water, but now that it's much thicker, it mostly just yells nada enchilada. It does not have a lot of, um, you know, force to like move through that. All right, now onto the next product. And this one, personally for me, if this works, will be a game changer. And that is a guacamole keeper. And this thing claims that it's going to keep your guacamole fresh in the fridge for days. And we all know the avocado, right? Like, first of all, it's only ripe for maybe a day and a half when in season. Otherwise, you know, you get like a window of maybe an hour. And then if you do cut into it or you make guacamole or something, you have to eat it all at once because it's gonna go brown immediately. I mean, there's a reason that guacamole is extra. She's extra, she's a queen. So we're gonna make some guacamole and we're gonna test this in the fridge for a couple of days and I'll keep checking on it. And we're gonna see if it actually keeps it fresh. And I'm gonna keep a little container of guacamole separate and just see if this does a better job than just like packaging up some guacamole. All in the name of science. So this is what it looks like. It is by, I believe, Progressive Prepworks. So I'll show you guys how it works once we put the guacamole in. But first, I mean, we gotta make some guacamole. Love guacamole. I have a whole bunch of avocados here. Speaking of uh, extra, they've already turned mildly brown. They've only been out for like 20 minutes. That's just how it is. You just gotta take the guacamole with all its extraness. And for me, with my guacamole, I like to do a little bit of red onion. Not a little, I really like red onion in mine. Just gotta pile that in there. And I like to put it in now because I like to crush up the red onion a little bit because I just, I like that onionness in it. I know it's not everyone's favorite thing, but I personally like it. Then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mash, and then we're gonna add in some tomato, a little bit of cilantro. Not a lot, just a little. Don't come for me in the comments if you don't like cilantro, all right? No, it's not everyone's favorite thing, but I like a little bit in my guacamole. That's pretty much the only time, actually, now that I think about it, that I actually like cilantro. It's just in guacamole, that's it. And then of course we can't forget salt and pepper. Lots of flaky salt, oh, so good. It's simple, but tasty. And now I'm gonna add in some diced tomato. We're gonna add in a little bit of some cilantro. Start with like that, maybe a little bit more. And now of course, some nice flaky salt. Oh, delicious. And then some pepper. Where did I put my fresh pepper? It's right here. Oh, actually, you know what? I have another product that we can test this out for. So this is my pepper grinder. This is what I do to grind my pepper. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Here's the pepper grinder. But I found this one online that's like one of those auto grinders. And I was just kind of curious because, well, first of all, it looked really cool because it like lights up and stuff. But I'm also curious. Oh my gosh, it scared me. But as I was saying, I wanna know if I can control how much of the pepper comes out. Is it just all gonna come out at once? Is it like really fast? Do you have to like wait a while and it's just like, you know, like what, what happens here? I don't know. 
Oh my gosh. Oop. Well, I guess that's it then. Well, I don't like that setting. It's just like basically halved peppercorns in here. But you can adjust how coarse of a grind you want on the pepper with this little thing here. So I'm going to do that. That looks good. Let's try that. Oh, let's try it not in this bowl. All right. So that's what came out. So you can see it isn't very streamlined. Like it's not all the same size. Let's see if I can make it a little bit more of a finer grind. Let's tighten this up. Let's see. Okay, that's much, that's better. I think. See that now this is a little too fine. I don't know how I feel about this thing. Also, when you're lifting up, you do get some stray pieces of pepper that kind of fling all over the place, which isn't my favorite. How does this compare to like my pepper grinder versus this one? Fairly similar. I feel like you really have to fine tune it a bit to get the right level. I guess if you're making a recipe that needs a lot of pepper, this would be great because you just go, oh, a lot of pepper. All right, before we package it up, must taste test. Eat salt. I was just gonna say that, Christopher. Because I knew that. Did you like my pepper grinder? It has a pepper and it has a salt one too. Salt grinder? Grind your salt and put it on top. Woo! It's a salt bay right there. Nice freshly ground salt. You don't look happy about it. Salt doesn't taste better when it's freshly ground. This is just performative. You wouldn't add that to anything? It comes in a two pack? Yeah, it comes with like the, this, the pepper one. Do they look different? I don't know. So you get two pepper grinders, you can give one to friend or family and keep one. And then salt as God intended from like your this. aunt. <laughs> Little sprinkle sprinkle. Nonsense. This is a good idea though. Turn it upside down. You really have to dial in what your preference is. I feel like once you get your preference, then it's nice. There oh. are like half rocks of peppercorn in there. Like really, like halves, like big chunks? That's big good chunks. for a, like a steak up off. Oh. True. Plus it like has lights and stuff. So you can cook in the dark. Not for salt though. Not for salt. All right, this looks good. So now let's package this up. I'm gonna get my other little container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in this container and just put a lid on, that's it. And then for this container, I'm gonna put some guacamole in and then I'm gonna put a little layer of saran right over top of it and then put a lid on to kind of seal out any of the air, which is what this also does. And then the rest is gonna go into this container and we'll see how long lasting it is. You better not ruin this, <laughs> this guac for me. I'll be real mad. And I'm gonna save some in here because I would like it with some chips. All right, one, sealed. Number two, we are pressing down and then we're putting another lid on it. Done. And then for this, you're supposed to mound the guacamole into the center so that the little air pockets can escape out the sides. I just stepped on something. Just onion, it's fine. Now it says in the instructions here to press evenly down on the guacamole to push all the air out. Let's try it. I can feel the air coming out the sides, it's so funny. Checking to make sure that I've eliminated any pockets. I think I have. So to me, this is as far as it's going down. There are two visible pockets right here that I can't get out without having to take it off, try and readjust and then push down again, which I think would be really annoying. So I'm wondering if that's gonna affect the guacamole at all, because it's really, it's not going down anymore. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge as is, and we'll kind of review it over the course of the next couple hours and days. Stay delicious, please. Into the fridge they go. All right, we have a guacamole update. So I left the guacamole overnight in the fridge and guys, look at this. Okay, guacamole number one, you can see it is brown on top. Now guacamole number two with the saran wrap. It also is a little brown on top. And then guacamole number three, everyone, not brown on top. What? Okay, I'm pretty impressed by this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some of this for lunch today and then reseal it and just see how it stays in the fridge and see if it continues to stay like this. But like, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Very excited about this. <laughs> All right, update on the guacamole. I've been slowly going through it, but like, God, oh, that looks really dark. It looked like it didn't do anything. It is still green. 
I've been slowly going through it, adding the lid back. Like there's a little bit of brownness there, but like overall, it is still very green. It's cold, which I, I guess not everyone wants cold guacamole. I don't know. I don't mind it. And it stayed fresh. I think this thing is fantastic at keeping the guac fresh or just like mashed avocados if you want to just do that. But like this has worked so well. I'm very impressed. All right, now onto the product that has 38, not 37, 38,000 reviews and it's like four and a half stars that's crazy and that is for these little silicone baking cups that you can use for cupcakes or muffins or whatever baking needs you want they're reusable dishwasher safe and it's going to make the whole process of making little cup size of whatever even little quiches that'd be so cute in here it's just going to make the whole process a lot easier and they came in this very colorful stack which my children have opted to you know put into some form of pattern. They were actually having a lot of fun, like lining all of these out and like putting different toys in them and stuff. I've washed them since then, but this is actually like a fun kid's toy. So I really wanted to test these for two reasons. Number one, I don't like cleaning out the muffin tin after I make muffins because it's really annoying. Like every single little pocket's like scrub this one, scrub this one. I don't have time for that. None of us have time for that. So wouldn't it be so much easier to just like pop these out and then stick them in the dishwasher when you're done. But what I'm very curious about is how well it actually cleans in the dishwasher. Am I gonna put it in and then it says it's gonna clean it and then it doesn't and it's I'm stuck with like all this stuff stuck at the bottom and then I have to clean it by hand anyway? I don't want that either. So I thought I would test it and see if it's actually going to clean the dishwasher and does a good job at like making muffins. And I also, okay, a little nostalgia, but I found <laughs> this muffin mix, which I used to be obsessed with. I love this stuff so much. Oh, brings me back. It's just the oatmeal chocolate chip stuff from Quaker. And so I wanted to make some. And I was like, great, good excuse to make these then. Oh my goodness, even the smell of the mix is bringing me back. I don't know what it is about this stuff, but I really like it. Now I need three quarter cup of water and then an egg. Boop. And now we mix and then we bake. All right, mix, 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 mix. Mix, 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 don't over mix. Okay, now I have my little muffin tin and now I'm gonna add in, whoo, that was the fun part. What, what colors am I gonna choose? I mean, I feel like I'll choose most of them, but do I wanna do it in a pattern? So many options. Okay, everyone, I'm making patterns. What does Rachel do with her day? She makes patterns. Doesn't even look that nice, but we're gonna go with it. Now I'm going to give them a quick spray, a little quick spray with Pam. Like how I got that like all over my water bottle. It's fine. Now we're just gonna fill these up and bake them and then we get to eat them so we can see how it washes. Christopher, yeah. do you remember this, this mix? Oh, yeah. Well, don't say it like that. Oh, thank you, please. They're delicious. What are you talking about? My name's Christopher. I only eat homemade stuff. All right, here are the muffins. Delicious. Let's take one of these out and just see how much is left on the actual wrapper itself. This one looks good. All right, so that's what's left inside the wrapper. So now I'm gonna put this in the dishwasher. We'll see if this actually comes out. And obviously need to taste test the muffin. Obviously. Mmm. I love them so much. I mean, it needs a little butter but it's so good. All right, in you go. Please be clean. Okay, this came out of the dishwasher, so not clean at all. So I think what I'm gonna do now, although this is kind of extra annoying, but I'm gonna try it, is I'm gonna have another one and I'm going to like just slightly rinse it and then put it in the dishwasher and see if that makes a difference so that the crumbs don't have a chance to dry, but like, Look at that, that is just unacceptable. I'm not gonna be cleaning these out every single time I use them. So I'm gonna try that and see if that makes a difference. Okay guys, I went a little extra on this one and I like gave it a bit of a scrub, a little bit of a rinse as soon as I peeled off the muffin and like there's still, ugh, I hope you guys can see it, like there's still some residue in here, which is just super annoying and I don't wanna have to clean these every single time. So I think next time, since I have these, I am going to spray it a little bit more heavily with like a baking spray and see if that makes 
some difference. If you guys have any thoughts, let me know. Cause I think this is such a good idea. It's just not cleaning well for me. Honestly, I'm still blown away by that s'mores maker. It really worked beyond my expectations. Let me know in the comments which product surprised you the most, which one you thought was the most interesting. And thank you so much for watching. Check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. Subscribe, new videos here every single Saturday. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.